Hey guys, welcome to another Ayla, or further Master Room video. Today we're carrying on with some further Pure 2. Um, and we're taking a look at basically the last actual topic in further Pure 2, which is looking at the surface area of a revolution. So, um, basically continuation from at length, um, which is basically further integration. But let's take a look at it, um, see what we've got. So this first question here is taken from one of the international papers. Quite a nice easy question to get started, just to basically practice using the formulas. So let's jump into it. So question seven, we've got the equation y equals e to the minus x. Now we've got the part of the curve c between x equals zero and x equals one three, which is rotated two pi radians about the x-axis. So we want to show that the area s of the curve generated, or the curve surface generated, is given by this formula here for s. Now the formulas are given in the back of the formula book, pretty much the last page for the A level for the maths. Now you've got this idea of you working with Cartesian coordinates, parametric form, or polar form. Now you should be confident to just identify which one this is, and we've been further math students. In our case, we're working with Cartesian for this first question here. So, what we need for our formula is dy by dx all squared. So first let's work out dy by dx, and then we'll square it. So dy by dx is just the differential of y with respect to x here. So if you differentiate e to the minus x, what would we get? Well, the differential of minus x is minus 1, so we get minus e to the minus x there. Okay? But if we square this, what would we get? So dy by dx all squared. Well, that would give us minus e to the minus x times minus e to the minus x. So we get positive e here. So I don't need to do it in a bracket. We get positive e to the minus 2x, okay? So we've got minus x and you times it by 2, okay? So we get minus 2x. So we've got everything we need now. All we do is we plug it into the very top formula there, um, given to the right. So s is going to be equal, so it's 2 pi times the integral. We've got to decide our limits. Well, we've already been given them, but if you weren't given them, how would we decide them? Well, we're told in the question, the part of the curve C is between x equals 0 and x equals ln3. So 0 and ln3 of y. So y in our case is e to the minus x. So e to the minus x. And then we times it by the square root of 1 plus dy by dx all squared, which is e to the minus 2x. So that's e to the minus 2x. And this is with respect to x dx. Okay, so in that case, we've got everything we need. I've got an extra bracket here, but it doesn't matter. So we've got s equals 2 pi, which they've got the integral of 0 to ln 3 e to minus x times the square root of 1 plus e to the minus 2x. Perfect. We've got exactly what we need there. And that's the first question. There. So we're not actually working out the area for this one, just working basically the, or showing the working that we're going to need to get the formula. Um, oh, sorry. Sorry, the curved surface area there. Okay, so that's the first question done. The next question then, we've got a curve C, which has the equation y equals 2x cubed. The curve is rotated through two pi radians about the x-axis. Um, so can we give the answer to three significant figures? So, again in this case, identify whether we're working with Cartesian, parametric, or polar. In our case again, Working with Cartesian, I don't think I picked these questions particularly well, I think they're all Cartesian. Um, so I might have to do another video with maybe a parametric equation, um, or parametric form question, maybe polar. Um, but let's carry on working through these. So question one, we've got y equals 2x cubed. So again, what we need to do here is work out dy by dx, um, and then we can start plugging into the formula. So in our case, dy by dx, nice and easy, we just get 6x squared, okay, so s is equal to 2 pi times the integral of y, where in our case y is 2x cubed, sorry I forgot my limits as well, so where we're working between, x is between 0 to 2, okay, so them are our limits, don't forget them, and we times this by the integral of 1 plus dy by dx all squared, so dy by dx all squared, we just work that out nice and easy again. Just need to square this here, so that's equal to 6x squared 
squared, that would give us 36x to the power of 4 there. So we times this by the square root of 1 plus 36x to the 4. Okay, and we are integrating with respect to x. So, probably a few ways you can do this. In my opinion, the easiest way is to integrate using substitution. So, to do that, I'm going to use the integration here of u equals 1 plus 36x to the 4. Okay, we can make life a little bit easier though before we do the actual substitution. Um, we've got this 2x cubed here at the front. So I can use linearity here and pull it out to the front um, of the, the, this factor of 2 here. So that's going to give us s equals 4 pi times the integral from 0 to 2 of x cubed times this uh, square root here. Okay, which we can just write as 1 plus 36x to the 4 to the power of a half. Just write that out for now. We might not necessarily need that. Um, so now, all I'm going to do is use my substitution, but remember when we're using substitution, we need to work out dx as well, okay? So du by dx is 144 x cubed. So in that case, dx is equal to 1 over 144 x cubed du. So we've got everything we need now. Let's start plugging everything together and see where we end up. So s is equal here now to 4 pi times the integral of, sorry, let's just put the limits in, 0 to 2 of x cubed. So we've got 1 plus, in fact, we've got the dx. We've got 1 plus 36x to the 4. So we know that's u. So this is u to the power of a half, so the square root of u. And then we times it by dx, which is 1 over 144x cubed du. Okay, I'm keeping my limits as they are now. I'm not going to bother switching them, because I'll just convert u again at the very end. So x cubed will cancel here with that x cubed. So what I've essentially got here now is basically the square root of u times 1 over 144du. So I'm going to take this 1 over 144 out as well. So in this case, uh, again using linearity, this gives us 4 pi over 144 times the integral now of the square root of u. Okay, so the square root of u, du. And this is nice and easy to integrate, just add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. This would be pi over 36 on the outside, can divide both top and bottom by 4. So I've got pi over 36 times, so integrating this here, so this is u to the power of a half, add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. So I get 2u to the 3 over 2, divided by 3. And this is again between 0 and 2. So at this stage now, this is just an exercise in substitution. So I won't go into loads of detail here. But essentially, what you should get to three significant figures, if you plug the limits in correctly here, is to three significant figures, 806. Okay, so three significant figures. Okay, so hopefully that's okay. Um, using substitution to integrate is very common with these type of questions. Um, so as long as you're confident with your integration by substitution, I don't think you should have too many issues. Okay, so that's the end of that question. And then let's look at this final question here now. Um, quite a good question, I think. We've got a, a circle C with the center O and the radius R. And we've got the Cartesian equation given as x squared plus y squared equals R squared. So R is just a constant. So the first part just asks us to show that 1 plus dy by dx O squared is equal to R squared divided by R squared minus x squared. So how do we do this one? Well, what I do first is I just differentiate implicitly our Cartesian equation. So if we differentiate everything with respect to x then, well x squared would be 2x. y squared would be 
So you've got this way you've got to use implicit differentiation then. This would just simply be 2y dy by dx. And then we've got this r squared, but remember r is just a constant. So it doesn't matter whether you square this constant or whatever you do to it. When you differentiate it, it will always be zero. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is obtain this in terms of dy by dx. So I can subtract 2x off both sides. So 2y dy by dx is going to be equal to minus 2x. And then divide both sides by 2y. So we get dy by dx is equal to minus 2x divided by 2y. And then in that case, we can divide both top and bottom here by 2. Okay, So all we get to finish with is minus x over y. But obviously, this isn't the result we want. Um, we want to show that 1 plus this whole expression squared is equal to r squared divided by r squared minus x squared. So first let's work out dy by dx r squared. Well that will just simply be the plus here, so if you square minus it becomes positive, so that will be x squared over y squared. Okay. So essentially 1 plus x squared over y squared is equal to r squared over r squared minus x squared. So let's just show the right hand side then is equal to 1 plus this. So the right hand side is r squared divided by r squared minus x squared. Well remember r squared is just simply x squared plus y squared. So my numerator is x squared plus y squared divided by r squared, so x squared plus y squared minus x squared. Well, the x squared in the denominator just cancel out. So I get left with x squared plus y squared over y squared. And then in that case, we can split this up as two fractions. This is x squared over y squared plus y squared over y squared. So that gives me 1 here. That just cancels down to 1 plus x squared over y squared, which is exactly what we needed to show, because that's 1 plus dy by dx all squared, exactly as we needed. So there we go. So that's part A done, quite a bit of work really for three marks, um, but there we go, so as required. And then in part B, we're going to show that the surface area of the sphere generated by rotating C through pi radians, like the x-axis, is 4 pi r squared. So, again, we're working in Cartesian, so we're using the very top one. So if we just get rid of all this, let's have a go with it. So, part B, let's write everything down that we know. Well, we need dy by dx all squared, which we've already got. Um, so I can write this out now. S is equal to 2 pi times the integral. So what are my limits for this one? So there's a few different ways you can do this. If you think of a sketch, mine will be rubbish, but you get the idea. So if my radius is r, what I've got there is minus r to r, r to minus r here. Okay, so it's a bad sketch, but to give you an idea of what, it, what the question is that we're tackling, this is what we're looking at, right? that's our problem at hand. So you can either integrate between minus r to r, or you can go between 0 and r, and then due to symmetry of the problem at hand, we just need to times that answer by 2. So I can take that 2 to the outside again, so it's going to be 2 pi times 2, so we can write that as 4 pi. Okay, so 4 pi here. So I'm integrating from 0 to r, so I need to double my answer at the very end. Okay, so 4 pi from 0 to r of y. So what's y in this case? Well, y, remember, is just rearranging this here. So y squared is equal to r squared minus x squared. In that case, y is just a square root. Like so. So I've got the square root of r squared minus x squared. 
and then we times it here in this case by the square root of 1 plus dy by dx r squared which we already know because we're given it in part a is r squared over r squared minus x squared and we integrate all of this with respect to x so this looks like a complicated integral but it's not too bad due to the fact that we can cancel and what can we cancel well if you think about writing these expressions in index notation it makes it a lot easier to see so this is r squared minus x squared to the power of a half times this expression now so both top and bottom will have a power of a half so that's r squared to the power of a half divided by r squared minus x squared to the power of a half as well and now this cancels nicely that cancels here with that so all I have to get left with is r squared to the power of a half which is just r okay so my actual integral now is just 4 pi times the integral from 0 to r of r with respect to x okay remember r is just a constant so if we integrate it we're just going to get rx so I've got 4 pi now lots of rx with these limits from 0 to r okay and then simply plug in your limits here for x so all I'm going to get then is 4 pi times r squared and you plug 0 in we get minus 0 okay so in that case 4 pi times r squared just gives us 4 pi r squared as required okay so quite a nice question though to you know a bit of problem solving um, a good question though so that brings us to the end of this video um, definitely not the easiest topic that you're going to be doing a question for maths but I hope it's helped um, any issues just let us know down below cheers